What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Anime Version Podcast, the eighth ever episode. You got me, Gozen, from Anime Uproar, and my co-host, Briggs. What up, Briggs? What up, boys? Always good to be here. And now, the man who no longer wants to be called a virgin, but a Chad, Ray, the Attack on Titan. Chad, what up? What up, guys? Nice to be here. And today, we are pretty much covering everything after the anime like half of it the first half and then next week we're actually finishing the entire series the last chapter should be out of attack on titan by then and so the next will be us commenting one of the first podcast episodes that's going to comment on the final chapter of attack on titan which is going to be crazy yeah, that's wild that we're literally we timed it out so perfectly that this podcast is going to end with like the final episode and the final chapter happening within a week span it's it's so cool yeah because i don't even take credit for it i just feel like the universe allowed it it to happen it just happened so today we're going from where the anime ended up until chapter 127 and then next week we're just gonna finish the manga exactly yeah that's 128 to 139 which 139 not out yet so we are on the cutting edge of this whole attack on titan shit i must say i forgot how long these chapters are Exactly. Like, so what yeah. did we do this week? Was it like one sixteen? Did we start out? I think it was one fifteen. One fifteen. Yeah. Like there w- wasn't a ton of chapters, but there's so long, so much stuff stuff happened. Like I don't even. know. I yeah. guess we just got to start from the beginning, or just ask Ray. What are your general thoughts on? First of all, this is your first time ever reading manga. How did you? Yes. What was your uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I actually enjoyed it because I'm an avid reader, so um it was great it was a great kind of break from watching anime to be able to to read manga so for me it wasn't too bad i think the biggest challenge was because it's black and white um sometimes you have to second guess like who a certain character is when they first come up because you're so used to watching the manga but or sorry watching the anime but other than that i thought it was uh like a pretty good experience i've only read one other manga before it was when it was really young. It was Shaman King. Mm-hmm. Shaman Besides King. Besides that, but I don't remember reading That's it. That's getting a remake, by the way, so hype yeah. for that. There you go. I could relive uh, that one manga I read. You but, could relive uh, your glory days. read left to right sometimes? No, I think I was told like when I bought it. I think it was at one of those book fairs when you're a kid. Mm. And um, like the person told me at the desk, you have to do it this way. So I knew from the beginning. I wasn't like... What the hell is this? Like some sort of weird time trip, or we're going backwards? So, <laughs> no, I, I got that right from the beginning. So luckily, um, it all worked. Yeah, out. the biggest difference I'd say for manga versus anime is sometimes with speech bubbles, you're not always hundred percent sure who to attribute it to. Unlike an anime where they make it very clear with the voices and everything who's talking. Mm-hmm. So that's I think one of the things that could be tricky. But overall, I think the Attack on Titan manga does a great job of being clear with what's going on. Yeah, and luckily there are quite a bit of flashbacks, but I did find the manga was pretty clear in like, letting the reader know when the flashbacks were. You could tell right away from the plot it was a flashback, so yeah. that wasn't something that hindered my reading at all. This mm-hmm. is usually a manga trick that they do. They do it, the outline outside the panel is black when mm-hmm. it's a flashback, and multiple manga do that. Plus, you see Aaron with Mikasa and Armin, and they're yeah. they're having the drinks. Yeah, like, it's like, okay, we're, it this is, they didn't just jump to like to something completely different plot wise. Yeah, obviously they're much more obvious. Back. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so cool, Ray. Do you want to jump into the chronology? Did you want to say any what the fuck moments just leading up to it? Um, I mean, I sound like a broken record, but God, it seems like the further we go along, Attack on Titan the more complicated things are for a number of reasons, like thinking about who is the quote unquote good person, who is the, the enemy at this point, it's just things are so complicated at this point with like Aaron, especially Um, that Alliance at the end too. There's a panel near the end where you see Gabby Reiner, trying to think who else is in it. Like just people you'd never thought would be those two. Yes. But uh, Mikasa, and like all of them are in the same panel and you're like, what the fuck? Like I would have never predicted this, you know, just last week that oh, yeah. everyone would be working together. I know 
that last episode is pretty good because it goes to show how there are still like philosophical differences, but they're willing to form that alliance at the end. So that was a what the fuck moment for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so many twists point, as yeah. well with Aaron that just like Dude, the left twist me just with Aaron I, I can't and believe it. and Zeke just blew, Yo! blew my mind. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's Attack on Titan's biggest strength, the power to blow your mind. And definitely Aaron, not only with the fact that he tricked Zeke, which I kind of feel like you could have saw coming, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray, you probably knew it was very out of character for him to just erase the whole Eldian race, right? Yeah, no, I, I thought he wouldn't go along with that. And Armin but, saw and, through it as well, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And then that's one level, and then the other level oh, is, yeah. is him actually making grisha carry it out yeah that so is he, insane well, we should yeah we should start at the beginning but that's just absolutely uh, insane so we're yeah. in like chapter 116 it starts off with like aaron and gabby and i think her name is uh peak or pike i don't know how to pronounce it are in the same peak. room um yeah and she points think, the gun to aaron so i guess we start there right i think we started because the the last episode we did was when there was that um thunder spear explosion and we yes. were predicting whether Levi yes. died yes. or not. So the last episode wasn't out yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's how we we uh, ended it. So obviously, um, what happens? The others, I think Hanji and the others, noticed that explosion, which we were talking about how stupid that was in terms of Levi setting it up that way. But we see half of Zeke's body, the bottom half, I believe, blown off, and he is conscious, um, and. I think there's a lot of flashbacks in that first chapter with Zeke and uh, Kyver. I think his name is the guy who was the uh, holder of the Beast Titan before him. Yeah, just say Zeke. Tom because I'm not even sure. Tom, I think yeah. it's like Xaver or something like that. Yeah, but... I don't know if there's a silent letter, but whatever. Tom, we could say Tom. Tom, there you go. Um, we get flashbacks with Zeke and Aaron. And there is like this notable line as well. I enjoy it. That's the good thing about the manga is it's a lot more easier to record lines than on the show I found. But um, Aaron says something to the, the degree of, I wish I was never born in the world. That would have been the greatest salvation of all. And at the time, <laughs> that was like a really noteworthy thing, especially looking as we further, like go further in the manga and just how integral he was to this whole world. Like he is the person who moves the plot mm -hmm. uh, forward. So that was a pretty noticeable uh, quote right there. But yeah, a lot of flashbacks. And then obviously there's that moment when um, I believe... Like, I know he's able to control the Titans. What did he create that Titan, Zeke, that ended up picking him up and ripping his stomach and putting him inside? Yes, I would imagine that was a Titan he made from his spinal fluid. That way he was able yeah. to control it. And it was like before, like while he was kind of dying there. And then I, I honestly think that that was also just uh, Emir Fritz following the uh, helping out the Royals. Mm -hmm. and also doing it for him because he didn't have much consciousness left there i don't know how much he could have done so i think emir fritz played a role in like getting that titan to kind of put him i inside. guess we don't know but even if someone's like pretty close to dead like we don't really know do we which one yeah it like was. i don't think i don't think zeke was i think zeke was right to die so mm -hmm. That's that's the view. I don't think he's like I'm gonna get out of this 100. percent I think he was right to die, and then the way it turned out, the Titan saved him before that because no one should have been able to survive from those injuries. I feel like even a Titan, even a Titan shifter, but because he was royal blooded, that Emir Fritz went above and beyond to help him because at this point she's still a slave for the royal family until Aaron talks her out of it. No, that's fair enough. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so we get that. Um, Levi, in this chapter, when Hanji finds him, she says he's dead, which I did like respect in a way. I thought, wow, Attack on Titan's going to kill off Levi. That's pretty You respect that? Ballsy. Your yeah. favorite character? No, All obviously right, so I didn't like it, but I'm like, you like ballsy things. Levi right. is... It would have like, to be in a way more badass way than that. Because like we said, it was kind of dumb. Yeah. Like you could just keep on chopping off Zeke's legs. Why would you have to put that spear in his neck? It was just unnecessary. Yeah, and again, later in this part, Levi comments on it. And he's like, I underestimated how much that guy was ready to die. Mm -hmm. But it's like, he never should have done that. In the first place. The, dude, the dude's going to die this year anyways because of Amir's curse. So it's not like he's 
forfeiting like a hundred years. He's forfeiting like maybe a few days, a few weeks, a few months. Mm. Like, yeah. So definitely not a good call on Levi's part. No, not at all. Um, yeah, I think. And then what ends up happening is um, you get Zeke coming out of the Titan fully healed. And uh, the others end up like noticing him and they don't, Obviously, they don't recognize him, I don't think, because they don't make that connection about that Zeke. Um, like, did you get, um, uh, did you kind of predict that they recognized him? Because they kind of just went about their business and said, oh, like, are you okay? What happened? I don't remember this. Which part Which part are you talking about? Wait, so this is where sorry? Zeke comes out of the Titan. Yes. When he's fully healed. And he talks about all he remembers is this young girl putting the bottom half of his body back together. Yes. Oh, what about so that? Ymir definitely saved him in regards yes. to that. It is whether or not he was the one who controlled the Titan or Ymir was. So I guess it's probably Ymir. That makes sense, Gozen. Yeah. What's what, what was your question though? Oh, uh, it was just because the others end up noticing him um, nearby and they're speaking to him, but they don't. Who, who do you mean by the others? Who saw? Like the people who are with Hanji. Yeah. Yeah. They see him, but they were. They were the guys who were on Zeke's side looking for Zeke, right? Oh, okay. Hanji was so one of their prisoners. Zeke, yeah. Yes, that's exactly yeah. it. So okay. right. Hanji yeah. right now is one of their prisoners. And at this point, she saw Levi and told them that he yes, was dead, she right? Did. Yes. And and they were going to check uh, that Levi was actually dead. But then that's when I believe Zeke showed up. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So that's why they didn't go crazy there. All right. So, yeah, I think the end of the chapter, we get. Um, kind of like what Briggs was talking about when Gabby is imprisoned and Aaron ends up coming in and he tells her to put out the distress call to the Marleyans to flesh out the spies. And then that's when Peak comes in and ends up Just killing that guard. Rolls the fucking head and off. Yeah. Yeah. Ends up pointing that gun towards Aaron, which at that point, at that point I wasn't too threatened because I'm like, what is she going to do? Like she can't kill him. Yeah, right. and so, Aaron looks so calm and so badass. It's just yes. like, all right, shoot me. You won't. I know you won't. You can't kill me. You need to turn into a titan, which you can't do right here, and eat me. You're not going to kill me. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. This, and, then, and then Peek puts her hands up. It's like, oh, how the tides have turned. Yes. That was such a badass moment for Aaron because, yeah, he just puts his head right into the gun, and he's like, okay, you clearly can't break orders. You got to catch me alive. So I'm the one in control. And yeah, that was great to see. What did you think of Peak's whole story that, hey, I'm Eldian. I know that the time for Titans is, is slowly like becoming history mm. because of the fact that technology is getting so advanced. And when it's history, then obviously they won't have any use for Eldians who they view as monsters. So they're going to get rid of them. So we have to, as Eldians, destroy Marley first. What do you think of her whole speech there? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting because it was this honest moment, especially with Gabby and how she's saying, as you mentioned, like there isn't a future, the path we're going. And even the way we were going along with Marley, they would kill us Eldians anyway. So it was interesting as well. And obviously we learned that. Um, In my opinion, it was believable, right? Like yes. it felt believable. Well, like I, it's well, a trap on Titan, so never believe what you're hearing. And any, it could obviously be a trap. But at the same time, it was like, okay, it kind of, like, her logic made sense. And Honestly, think, it made yeah. so much, it made more sense than her actual Actions. thought process, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, her actual thought process was, we can't trust Marley, but we can trust the comrades we've been fighting with, which yeah. is, like, the Marleyan officers. But I if, felt you have like, an hour, if you only have one year left to live, you're not, I guess you're, you're kind of more living in the moment and... At the end of the day, like she's not going to betray her comrades, maybe. So it does it does make sense as well. Yeah, like but... it, it's it's believe it's like it's possible. But I just personally, she to her credit, I feel like her trying to convince Aaron logic was better than her actual logic. <laughs> I so. agree. I agree. Yeah, Go ahead, and I Ray. think I think as you mentioned, like goes and you mentioned that. Um, I think the reason why it's believable is because there is kind of like a hint of truth to it because later on he ends up telling Gabby um, yeah like I, I kind of believed it but again I'm going to side with those people I've been fighting with so she does know that there is a hint of truth to it and I think that's why it was so believable as the reader as Aaron himself and how she's just able to 
take that whole situation, de-escalate it, and then believe him to bring him to the front there and then set up that quote unquote trap, which um, ends up not working that huge scene uh, with all the different uh, Marleans coming. But I mean, it could have not worked even more if Aaron wasn't such like, uh, I'm not fucking backing down. Like I'm not Aaron could have retreated. Easily. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. He still has that like cockiness to him when they're like, no, like back yeah, off. Like, and he's like, nope. <laughs> He's like, I'll take you all on. Like, this was before Zeke was even around, right? Yeah. So yeah. He's, he was, he's crazy cocky right there. Crazy cocky. Well, he has yeah. the Attack Titan and uh, the Warhammer Titan, right? Yeah. Oh, but but at but the same time, it's like you're risking everything here. Exactly. Maybe he had some faith that Zeke was going to show up. Yeah. And t- we, as we figure out, he can see future memories. So he might have been aware anyways that they'll get to the next steps. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's like, oh, if I know, if I could see a little bit into the future and know that I'll be alive, might as well take the fight. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. that's it's, it's another weird. thing. Like if, but if, if knowing that, what, what if knowing that changes your actions and causes you to, like initially you didn't take the fight, but now you did. It's well, like... that's, that's the thing. I think it creates this interesting, like paradoxical loop where everything is meant to be almost mm, true. because he was meant to go back taken by Zeke to get Grisha to take that to get so to that had point. to have happened no matter what exactly. so no matter what in this situation yeah. he knows he's going to be in that scenario it's like fake that's okay. what it seems like for okay sure. yeah Briggs I thought that too like can he foresee what's going to happen later on because he could read those future memories so mm-hmm. Yeah, and there but... are theories because the last chapter hasn't dropped yet. So with all the the ability of the attack titan to transcend time, that can be taken in a lot of directions. So there are different theories for how how that works and what we're talking about right now. So we'll have to wait till the last chapter drops, and then we'll hopefully know enough to have like a concrete explanation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this whole like. Um... I don't know if it's it's I guess it's not a time uh, skip, but this whole ability to read the the future is just it makes me want to go back and rewatch some of those older episodes because I mean, it's just it's such a crazy we we kind of knew it prior when we had that situation with um, Grisha and um, who is the guy yeah. uh, who, Kruger Kruger, yes. yes. And he doesn't understand how he could read the future, but God, like it just, I want to go back and remember when the Kruger episode. mentioned Armin and Mikasa. Exactly. That Crazy. Is it. Yeah. And if you look at the beginning of attack on Titan, the first episode, there's actually that nightmare he has that he wakes up from. Right. And you pretty much see like Titans infest the walls and stuff like that. So that could have been future memories right there. Mm-hmm even before he inherited the attack Titan. So there's, there's some interest, very like a lot of fruitful things to work with for theories around the ability to see the future. Yeah, no, it's, it's such a good show. I'm so glad I was brought onto this because um, someone actually mentioned, uh, I was reading like one of the comments and they said like this uh, manga or show, well, I guess, manga because of uh, English class should be like mandatory in English classes and I think it would because it would work so well like not just with the plot itself but with the politics with like ideology I think it's such a great conversational piece critical thinking skills this would be amazing for developing critical thinking skills because even like you know we won't get too much into it but even like Anywhere within society, we can talk between societies, we can talk within societies, we can talk about the red party, the blue party. People just hate the enemy so much, Mm -hmm. right? Sports teams, they just hate the enemy so much. It's like they lose the humanity for the enemy. While here, it's, it's explaining to you, bro, there's both sides of the story, right? And making you think about that. And even though we should logically know that, humans consistently throughout history act in ways that dehumanize the enemy Mm -hmm. so this is this is why i think these kinds of stories are so important and fiction has been proven through research to actually increase empathy and your ability to see the world through other people's eyes and that's exactly what attack on titan is doing here that's why i can't believe i think briggs you mentioned that theory saying how attack on titan promotes fascism 
Like it's yeah, like, there's there articles about it, and ridiculous. they're just by people clickbaiting, trying to get make money off of it. I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they don't actually believe it, or maybe I think there are people that believe it as well. And it's just crazy to me. It's like, <laughs> I, yeah, there I, are people who will believe anything. Yeah, right? of course. So I mean, yeah, I, I constantly hear about stuff like about what's going on in the world right now, and how much of it is fake, and how much of it is real, and like, there's just so much. There's an opinion every way about every topic, and yeah. nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah, but yeah, we could get back to the the plot itself. Yeah. So we ended up uh, Aaron getting brought out, and um, the Jaw Titan ends up coming up from the ground. I think bites off his leg, and then that allows him to transform. And uh, we get that whole situation with Reiner coming, the Jaw Titan fighting Aaron. And uh, I really liked the uh, the Warhammer like ability there. I thought it was really cool to see. Dude, it's actually um, so overpowered. This man just yes. speared them both like nothing. It is, but there is a but, weakness. Yeah, they say you, get exhausted, you can't. Right? Yeah, you. It's very quick that you exhaust yourself. Yeah, and then you leave yourself vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the thing. If you're, if you don't completely wipe out your opponents in that time period, it could really fuck you over. Mm hmm. Which yeah, and, it ends up we seeing the jaw tight. And just to uh, add, just yeah. to add, because where we're at right now, so right now we're entering manga stuff. So Aaron on the roof, getting attacked by the jaw titan was pretty much where the anime left off. And me and Briggs laughed about this before. So even though this is called the final season, in about like a year for the for next the upcoming winter, we'll get part two of the final season. The final season part two yes <laughs> so instead of just calling this season four that season five uh they're calling it the same season but we'll have to wait all this time to get it's it but very stupid titling wise but i appreciate the quality that they're able to do by not making it long running and doing it week by week and giving the time exactly the lack of filler and the pacing they're able to maintain because there is no filler um it, it, I wish they titled it a little bit better because it's annoying, especially when different places title things differently. Like Netflix will refer to things as different seasons while other places will just be like part one, part two. It's like we need some consistency there. But the overall quality of Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia and this new like way that they're doing things blows the old, the old layout like completely out of the water. Yeah, I, I really like the way that they're doing this. And obviously, I, it's not a big deal that we have to wait. I'd rather that than a, like a lot of anime got. They got a treatment where they just left the anime without catching up to the manga. And I wouldn't want that. So, That's true. you know, waiting a bit, it doesn't hurt me. But it is, I still find it funny how they call both final yeah, season the, fi one, the final two. season is like that's just good marketing on their end um no for sure though that's, at the same that's... time like re-zero is like season two part one season two part two it's like why not to make it season two and season three <laughs> yeah and how much space is in between there do you remember um it wasn't too bad it was i think it was within the same year or within 12 months there was another one all right yeah so kind of same situation exactly all right but yeah so just wanted for people who are uh only caught up to the anime and don't know what's going on that's this is where the anime ends and now we're continuing on with the pure manga stuff that we won't see until this upcoming winter cool so yeah um this i guess it it starts with the fight right yes with the fight obviously where where jaw titan failed to actually get aaron there's air there's airships above right aaron's completely surrounded they're like aaron come back into the building and he straight up jumps, <laughs> jumps to the ground. He's like, "You want me? Come and fucking get me!" Uh, it was, it was very badass. Absolutely, yeah. That fight too. Like he, he fared fairly well near the beginning part, but obviously, after the uh, Warhammer wears off and he loses that energy, um, Reiner and um, the Jaw Titan are able to. I would argue, like you know, um, Aaron's the one who. If they kept, if Zeke didn't interfere there, he was in pretty rough shape there. Yeah, I between think, him and the Marleans as I well. I think Aaron can pretty much take on any other Titan one on one at this point. It just with war, it's always so much more complicated. Like he's one v twoing Reiner and uh, the Jaw Titan, but at the same time, you have soldiers all around you. You have uh, Peak and her, yeah, her like Cartan, anti Titan yeah. artillery and all that. There's so like it was it was a losing battle. It really was. Yeah, it was not fair, but I agree that any of these enemies that are popping up 
one on one, Aaron could have destroyed yeah. them. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing there is you have Aaron mixing it up with all these different abilities. I think his willpower is interesting too because Briggs knows will is a very strong focus in Shonen uh, oh, yeah. series. It's and, crazy. Compare Aaron and how he keeps fighting compared to other Titans. It seems like yes. other Titans go down much easier. And Reiner, just personality-wise in this battle, he's his whole mentality is, fuck, I want this to be over. Aaron, just give up. Aaron, just give up. And Aaron just like has this purpose. Like He's like, yo, I'm going to do this. Like Even yeah. when he runs out of the spikes, he straight up takes Reiner's mouth, the mouth of his Titan, and launches him. Like, <laughs> Dude, he's we... just never ending power like never ending exhaustion we like, know that crazy. within attack on titan like willpower actually plays a role for example reiner literally couldn't regenerate because he didn't have the will to live so imagine yeah. that's why they always say aaron's the worst person to have these types of powers because his will and his tenacity is on a whole different level yeah and he's and a lot of people uh would there's a spectrum here right people who would rather die themselves or their people die rather than you know attack other people and then there are people like aaron who hey if you threaten my freedom then you lose your rights yes. and i'm gonna mm -hmm. i'm gonna He's attack you willing to commit it's pretty exactly. much genocide to protect yeah. his and they, they said it multiple times exactly yeah. and he's like you know what the world is threatening us and they can't won't rest until we're wiped out and so i'm gonna do what I can to ensure the survival of my people and my island. And I'm going to let anyone who wants to try to stop me, stop me, including the people on my side. But this is my choice that I made with my free will. So mm -hmm. fascinating and very like mature content, right? Like yeah. how, how do you, there's so much area here to say, this person is wrong, this person is wrong, this person is wrong, but it's like, there's no clear right answer. I feel like it's become overly clear that neither side is inherently right. Exactly. <laughs> like you, it's literally just, you have to pick what is your lesser evil. Because there's no, this is 100% the I feel the like right I'm just thing. enjoying the read-through at this point. I don't even know if I'm rooting for anyone, per se, here. No, like, exactly. I, me, like, I like Aaron as a, like a villain-esque character that he is right now, even though he's not really a villain. Um, it's just like I don't. I'm just enjoying to see like see where this plays out because it's honestly becoming a masterpiece. And it's like, is he a villain though? Because it all depends on the perspective yes, and what how you define a villain, obviously. But I mean, everyone is united against him. He's killing more people than anyone's ever killed. So it's like, I mean, as most definitions of villain will include Aaron. Yes, I I, I do agree. Right. But he is put in a super difficult situation. I agree like, with that 100. percent Well, his, you know, but how his, do you... his answer to that situation is very extreme as well, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's That's not even like I will use so these powers to protect my people. His way of protecting is just kill all my enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, and that's another thing in anime in general and shonen. Like you'll have a lot of these villains uh, that are going against our main characters, and their end goal is not bad. Their end goal might be world peace. Their end goal might be uh, whatever. But the means is what usually the protagonists have a problem with. And yet, here, our protagonist is the one yeah, that, he is that's the full willing extent to of the ends justify the means. Exactly. and Like to an extreme it's extent. It's fascinating for once to see that from a main character, right? Like, because we don't often see that. Mm-hmm. So then Zeke ends up showing up. I think we're at that point now, right? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, he shows up. Did we at all talk at all about the um, what's going on, how they end up letting the um, Aldeans out of the prisons? Um, yeah, you can mention that now. Yeah, it's hard yeah, to because they go back and forth, right? So it's hard yeah, to know exactly. I, just, I found that was interesting because it's kind of this, um, you see it the first time in terms of, the two sides, you know, the one side being like, we need you in order to help protect Aaron here. And then obviously, um, I think Connie just loses his mind when he's <laughs> let out. He's like, I've like been duped by so many people at this point, And you're like one of them. And yeah, it's, it's frustrating for them. But I think it's, it's like you caged us really... and now you want us to fight for you. Absolutely. Yeah, the even at this too. point, they don't know what the fuck to do because they're yeah. like... 
they're like, oh, we hate the Jaegerists, but these guys straight up want to wipe us out. So what can yeah. we do? Yeah, the R band too is interesting because here are people who they were categorized by arm bands back in Marley, and now they're using them um, against the Eldians. So it's interesting. And I think uh, Yelena says something like, well, you almost have to sometimes learn what your enemy has done, even though it's wrong. And yeah, just complicating morality there mm -hmm. because yeah, you're I, thinking they would have like hated you think they're completely they against were... the band. Meanwhile, they're using yeah. them now. Absolutely. Yeah, and I st I talked about this in my uh, chat review on the channel or the episode review on the channel, and it's like, yeah, does the fact that they have different goals justify their use of armbands more than the other guys who maybe have less good goals and stuff like that? So it's interesting. Well, mm -hmm. I'd say so. Originally, Marleans were using the R-bands to categorize kind of like race in a way, right? It's like, well, you have yes. the Eldians and then you have the Eldians that are like honorary mm -hmm. Marleans and they have different armbands and all that, right? And then you have Marleans yes. with their R-bands. And then here it was like, okay, we have the white one for the people who are the Jaegerists who initially sided with us. We have the red one for the people that only sided with, with us because they drank the wine that would turn them into a Titan. And then we have the people who were just completely uh, ignorant to everything going on. And now we're in a bad situation. So we have the black, the white, and the, and the red mm -hmm. to categorize that. So it's not based on who they are or who they were born as, but rather kind of their choices. Their, yeah. philosophy, their philosophy, yeah, which is how which they is sided. more which is more progressive, even though there are obviously issues there. Yes, but of course. the fact is Flock offers and like Flock is a monster at certain points, but Flock offered all of the guys like to join them and become Eldians, which which is not a good offer because they're straight up going to kill their country and all their people. Right. So it's like still you can get why Onyan Kapon later rejects it. But at the same time they're at least not judging people just based on their race. Mm -hmm. The Jaegerists, yeah. I yes. mean. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, yeah. And one other thing I thought was interesting before we get to um, Zeke coming in, Gabby ends up at one point ripping off Falco's armband. Yeah. Which she was like, again, you see that transformation within her. And no, you see it I a mean, lot later as well. But I'd say this probably arc is the most significant for showing how different Gabby has become and how she even will take on the role of saving Kaya that Sasha played before yes. as we read on. So that I think was great. Although again, she shot her protagonist and it's like, we don't even know how to feel about him anymore. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Well, at the same time, so it's definitely development. She saved what was she was initially brainwashed to think was the devil, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah at one point, yeah. Later yeah, on, she says the devil is within each of us, which is which is so one. fucking true. Because it's like yes. in history, how do you explain so many people doing such horrible things? It's because everyone has the potential for that in the right circumstances and environment, and that's why we got to be so careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Levi, Armin have alluded to that prior as well, just about killing people and thinking, well, you just have to do it in order to, you For know, you move on. For you and your on. people to move on to everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's definitely, it's interesting to see that transformation within her and we could get to it later Dude, on. I did not Kyle. expect Zeke to make a similar decision later on. Or, 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 so Zeke ends up coming and they kind of fight yeah. together, right? Um, yeah. If you want to talk about that first. Yeah, so this is when um, Zeke says it's his time uh, to come. I'm trying to look. Was this chapter, I think, 119? I, I want to see. 117? Oh, okay. maybe I'm wrong. My bad. I just want to see. Oh, yeah, I have no here. idea what happens in what chapter. I will yeah, just no, I just have right my notes here. I'm just trying to. Um, I think the biggest thing is the Marleans, when Zeke shows up, they're fearful about um, him not the yelling. touching the yelling, oh, yeah, number one. Too, yeah but also him not touching Aaron. And um, I think at one point the car Titan is destroyed, but the actual um, it was a trip, gun itself yeah. Yeah, is um, controlled by, I think his name's McGath. But um, yeah, they end up, uh, the big thing is end up shooting Zeke um, right by the nape, obviously. And he falls out and everyone is freaked out because they're thinking that he's going to end up screaming and we get that situation with um, Falco and his brother. And 
you know, it's this very like emotional moment where it's like, I don't want this to be the end of uh, my brother because I'm pretty sure as well, Falco just announced that he loved Gabby. So now she has that emotional connection with him mm-hmm. as well. So it's that super like tense moment there right at the end of the chapter where you know what's going to happen. Like I, I, in my mind, there was no doubt he was going to scream. But um, yeah, it's just, it's going to change the game if he does. Dude, that I thought he of might be happened. a little bit more emotionally connected to Falco there and maybe not scream or See, wait. I did not at it. all. No? I'm surprised <laughs> you thought that, Briggs. Because like for me, I'm like, after everything he's done, That's there's true. no fucking way That's he's going to be affected by Falco. But to, to his, to like, the thing is, as Falco as a character, I feel like we all don't want him to die because he represents like the next generation and he's by far the most least brainwashed from mm-hmm. the get-go right right away he lends himself to understanding the opposing view and stuff like that and if he died that would kind of like symbolically just be like so, the so, end of that finding each other and having a bridge i do want to point out though side. it seemed like it wasn't just oh let me just like sacrifice falco for no thing he actually ended up using falco to try to eat um reiner so he had a plan it wasn't just like all right i'm gonna turn this guy into a titan and then he's gonna die um, i don't care about him at all he clearly like there's a reason why falco was able to consciously bite reiner and then consciously bite the jaw titan it was because reiner was controlling him right not reiner yeah I mean, so or, zeke, was controlling um, him. zeke definitely he turned him because it was useful for his plans for of sure course. he didn't just he didn't just do it to be cruel yeah 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 I no, of course it was useful for their, for his plans. Like he was kind of he was on like death's door, and he was screaming to like save himself and attack his enemy. But it was also like I was just saying I didn't expect him to do it right away. I thought he might hesitate and be worried about yeah. Falco. But then it was like oh I could use I could make Falco into the armored titan like we initially planned. So it's no yeah. big deal. Yeah, there's that for sure, and then there's just the fact that. I mean, even if people die for Zeke and his worldview, it's not a bad thing, right? It's a release from suffering. So it's like, Zeke, I did like multiple videos of his philosophy and everything. And yeah, for him, like you can never judge by normal standards, his behavior. I think I also confused Reiner's connection with Falco to be Zeke's connection with Falco, which just wasn't Yeah, yeah. I 100% did that at one point, so. And Reiner, Reiner obviously wanted him to take the power so that he could save Gabby from that power because Gabby is his little cousin and he yes, wants to protect yes. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that w- <laughs> it's so funny. Like, Ryder is trying so hard to die and it yeah. just never happens. Nope. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about all that, right? Yeah. I mean, I thought uh, it's interesting. I didn't put that together in terms of um, Zeke saying, you know, it'll be fine with Falco because he'll end up eating Reiner. So that was interesting. Now that Briggs, you mentioned it, it makes sense. But yeah, I think Zeke says something like, well, it's a shame when Colt says, don't do it because of what will happen with my brother. Mm -hmm. He does look sympathetic for a moment there, but then he he, ends up saying, well, it's a shame. This is the plan. We can't deviate from it. We can't deviate from it. But at the very least, he was able to control Falco and try to make him into the next uh, warrior type of thing. Halo, thank you for the five subs. Yeah, thanks so much, Halo. And yeah, I I agree with uh, what you said there. He definitely, he's had to, actually protect his own brother as well mm-hmm. like he you know he was thinking about aaron and protecting his own brother and he put obviously his goal and his brother above yes uh above colt right and colt's brother so mm-hmm. that's a recurring theme in attack on titan everybody prioritizing their own close loved ones to that of strangers yes yeah but then obviously he doesn't uh consume reiner but he ends up getting the uh uh jaw titan yeah he made it so easy he was just human he was almost dead and he was gonna lose the power anyways right because i think that was a good example of uh me not knowing based off of the manga i'm like who is that guy that just came like that's like he kind of looked like aaron but then i knew it wasn't aaron yeah he's never really shown in human form Uh, he's shown shown in human form but like he He is he he was bleeding and his eyes were different and it's in black and white now like it was a very like he was he was all he lost half of his face he lost half of his face I'm like who is that <laughs> yeah yeah for me it's all like rereading refreshing so like 
I definitely never doubt like who who is, but yeah, no, I could see that definitely. The, and I think that Porco, when I first saw him animated, I'm like, yeah, this this looks much different to me than when I saw him in, in the uh, manga, manga. Yes. and that's because of the color and everything. Like, it really brings him to life. I will say though, the manga's art style has gotten much better. Better from what oh I my god, I was gonna Ray read it even after season on one, and I'm like, I can't do this. This is gross. Bro, Ray can't comment on that. Ray, if you ever like have a chance, read the first chapter and compare that to how much Isayama as a manga artist has grown uh by reading like the chapters we're reading right now. Yeah, it's crazy. It looks it like literally it's like night and day mm -hmm. how much he's he's gotten better with the with the drawings. Yeah, it's interesting. I'll actually uh while we're talking, I'll take a look at it because I have that website I'm reading it off of. But um yeah, obviously we get that inheritance, but then the big situation happens, which we talked about before, when Aaron ends up getting out of the Titan form or leaving it and then running towards um, Zeke and then Gabby shooting him there right in the head. Yeah, yeah shooting. I, I love the way you delivered that. It's like, yeah, and Gabby, I don't, I don't shot know how else to put it. It's right just... in the head. But no, yeah, how crazy was that moment? It's like, that was it's like Aaron one of the is craziest dead, moments. Right? And I mean, to be fair, uh, Aaron seems to die like multiple times. Like when, yeah. when he was eaten by the Santa Claus Titan, right? We thought he might be dead. And then now again. But what did you think before jumping on to the next chapter when you saw the chapter end with his head blown off? Well, was there, I'm trying to think, was there a hint that it went by his hand? I don't think so yet. No, no there I wasn't. Think, okay. I think at the end of the chapter was just his head spiraling. Yeah. I didn't think like that was the end of things because, yeah, I thought somehow it would end up working out that they could touch. I didn't know how, but I just didn't think, oh shit, like this is, this is going this is to just complicate the yeah, plot no, I, I exactly so, so i thought something would end up happening especially um well i guess we didn't get to the future part i it's so weird to think about impressions as well because when you get that bombshell of a twist like later on you just want to keep on clicking to find out what happens yeah <laughs> you just you forget about it but um yeah that uh that was a freaking dramatic moment especially we talked about the parallels with uh young aaron and then Gabby and just how Gabby was the one who ends up shooting him in the head. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that whole like sympathetic moment as well that Gabby has. So that was pretty intense. I do want to say quick side note. I just looked at the original manga and I totally know what you mean. Yeah. Oh my God. The detail is awful. Yeah. And this is a human being growing as, as like the series is gaining popularity, which is the interesting thing because these manga mangaka often start at like 17 years old sometimes a bit older sometimes a bit younger and then they're they're went from pretty much kids to adults by the time they finish the series mm -hmm. and you see them grow as artists along the way too yeah no i mean that was that was a pretty intense moment but i think what ended up happening was i didn't even give myself a chance to even process it because i'm like all right i gotta yeah, go you're right just pinching it yeah next, yeah next, you're like, next, yeah yeah like, you yeah, can't that... just leave that cliffhanger and expect me to just come back to the next <laughs> Plus, day. it's like Zeke looks like he was going to die, too. So, like, you never... With Attack on Titan, you you yeah. know there's yeah. always going to be some something up. Yeah. I mean, my thought process was definitely after he survived the Levi thing, he's not dying right now. Yeah, yeah no. Like, that was my thought process. So, in the next chapter, you see Zeke catch Eren's head. And then, boom, yes. he's in another world. He just got isekai Yes, he did. And we see that... Actually, that we'll see that later. We'll comment on that later. But yeah, go for the other world, Ray. Dude, this is such a good yeah. Crazy so he twist. finds himself oh in that new dimension, and I'm pretty sure right at the beginning Zeke is chained up, and um, we find out as well, obviously with the next panel that he was able to touch Aaron's head and come in contact with Aaron, which they've been always like flirting with the idea of like what's gonna actually happen. That's why they didn't end up shaking hands that one time. So, yeah, they end up going into that dimension. I think Zeke calls like the path to the coordinate. Yeah, mm -hmm. or the world of paths. The or coordinate yeah. where all paths land. converge or something. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so then you get Zeke and Chains. You see Amir there. And um, 
Zeke thinks um, Emir molded. He talks about like molded his body together. Um, I want to. What else do I have here? And there are interesting things. Just so I want to add some details about yeah. the world that are important. So it the world transcends time. So when even though uh, Aaron was really close to dead, right? You know how a head can only last so long after it gets decapitated. Yeah. But Whether it's like, just, like half of a second or like yeah, nanoseconds, yeah. whatever it is. And he had just that time to touch Zeke and then time pretty much stops. Yes, because they could spend years in, contact, in here, I'm pretty sure. Exactly. Yeah, and Zeke suggests that when he's like, we got all the time in the world. Like they could literally now, even though he was Trading a second guard. away from dying. Yeah, even though he was a second <laughs> away from dying. Now it's just irrelevant. Now they have all the power in the world. That would so be it's... such a Dragon Ball thing to do. It's like oh Go Goku's God. head gets sliced off and then he gets touched the by, by Vegeta. And then now they're in this other world. It's like, all right, we have years to train. And boom, they're back and they're Super Saiyan 12. Yeah, this I'm is so like that, except that philosophy. <laughs> no, and I mean, there's... And Attack on Titan is not like used a lot of those tropes, but in such an interesting way. Very different way, yes. Yeah. But and another thing is that, for example, Zeke was saying, even though in the real world, barely any time passed, like an instant when he was healed in that Titan, uh, in this world, he said it felt like ages, right? And he had a lot of time spending in this world while only a second or so passed in the real world. So that's something to consider too. Mm hmm. Yeah, the time thing was a bit complicated when I was going through it for the for the first time. But yeah, that was interesting. Um, like I mentioned, the uh, chains as well. You get Zeke who acts like he's imprisoned because um, it's all about whoever has the actual founding Titan. But then he ends up saying, actually, this is not true at all. I actually, because I have the royal blood and this happened, I can control um, Amir. And he ends up breaking out of the chains easily and then putting, yes, I think, was, Aaron in the chains. It was all a test to see Aaron's yeah. true, uh, true thing, right? Because, yeah, he ends up admitting to him that, yeah, I'm not down for your euthanasia plan. And uh, we kind of knew this before, but I think this is the first time he officially says it out loud. Mm -hmm. That exactly. this is not his exact, his exact plan. Very, exactly, because very it would have... smart of Zeke to, like, what's it called? Not just trust his brother fully right away. I mean, very smart for sure, but yeah, clearly he had the wrong impression the entire time. Yes. Like this whole time he's trying to force this like victim mentality onto Aaron and he's like, you're a victim of our father. Well, he like, assumed, he assumed that fault. his brother went through the same thing he went through with yes. the, the same father. And I think that's, that's fair to assume like that he would be, yeah, you can he assume would be that. brainwashed by this revolutionist. One, but he was it's totally wrong. It's insane that Aaron was the one who brainwashed his father. No. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, convinced him. Yeah, convinced but, him, not yeah. brainwashed, but convinced him. Yeah, like it's no, it's oh it's so my in god, I was like <laughs> on the edge of my seat. Yeah, and that was such a crazy twist, and and Aaron was telling the truth when he said that one time. It was at that point that he got disgusted by his father's behavior and Zeke thought it was because he killed children, but it was because he was hesitating to do it. Yeah, that's and that's right. what Aaron had trouble with. <laughs> Aaron had to make him step up and kill children. What a mass, what a, like, what a mastermind he is behind this whole thing that like, we didn't know Zeke didn't know. And by the way, Ray, you wouldn't know this, but in the data books, Zeke is like the smartest character intelligence wise along with Hanji. And yeah, no one saw what Aaron was doing coming. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Like what even when he's talking to um Grisha there, and I think there's a hint even prior to the chapter where he has that that conversation with Grisha with the children where um Grisha's able to recognize Zeke. Like, is that is that you? He looks up when he's at the desk the one time and Zeke's freaked out. And then yeah, Aaron's yeah. like, all right, time to go to the next memory. And he's like yeah, controlling he's it now. his mind off of it. Yeah, yes. exactly. That oh, that's was, so fascinating, oh my man. God. That's so fascinating that that he could actually, because Zeke brought him there, he can now shape the future. Um, that's the crazy. If it wasn't for Zeke doing that, it's... And oh another thing to keep in mind is now whatever memories Aaron sends to Grisha, He's also sending to his past self. Yes. Because his past self has access to Grisha's memories. Mm -hmm. So he can communicate to himself 
through past future. memories down to Grisha. Yeah, so it's like it's so like Inception, you know, it's so like so many levels going on there. Yeah, no, it's that's crazy. I was so tripped out at first though when I saw him talking to um Grisha for the first time and that communication. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And then when it ended up getting pieced together about um how he you know was the one who ended up shaping this whole plot and made sense but at first i was like zeke there for a moment when i'm like what the hell like <laughs> how are how are they recognizable these are two different time periods no yeah and it's interesting that grisha we thought we knew him right and like zeke thought he knew him and all of a sudden he's asking zeke he's like listen everything is gonna go according to aaron's plan from here on out you gotta try and stop him you gotta try and stop him. it's yeah. like grisha is begging Zeke to the stop guy someone who thought, who's doing like a revolution, which is what he initially yeah, wanted. Oh my crazy. god! And it's crazy. like so that layers. scene with the flashback when they were looking at Aaron as a child, and he's like, "Our father didn't make me this way. I've been this way since birth." Like he's just willing to kill anyone that like is his enemy. Yes, oh my exactly. god, it was so. Good. And if he's gonna if he's gonna threaten my loved ones, yeah. I'm gonna threaten them. Like there's yeah. no mercy. There's no mercy. Yeah, yeah. Aaron's confidence is just off the charts like just how he uh calls out um zeke there and says how you're just obsessed with your father not giving you the attention when you were younger and saying like i'm not that little kid i thought you thought i was like i'm able to i'm not that naive kid or the irrational kid i'm able to follow through on the particular plan i have just god he is just so different from what he was in the first yeah, couple. He's so years. badass oh, yeah. compared to Zeke. Like Zeke is just this oh, like apologetic puts, yeah. guy who like would rather wipe out his people than like be a trouble to anyone. And Aaron's like, of course I'm not that pathetic little brother you thought I was. Like <laughs> I'm gonna save our people, man. It's changed. Like it's that's what's so great about this. The script has flipped so many times. Where we thought at first Zeke, when we first saw him at the walls there. um like outside of his tide, we thought he was just the absolute badass. And who would have known that uh, Aaron would have just like taken the cake here? Oh and, yeah! Oh my god! Someone he's, said it was a plot hole. I don't. I do. I disagree. Have to say, it is a small plot hole that Aaron made Grisha do it, but Aaron would not have done it if Grisha did not do it first. Oh my god! It's no, so yeah, complicated. It's not, but I don't it's think it's not it necessarily is. a plot hole. Um, it just depends on what time travel. Uh, version they're using mm -hmm. and we have to understand more and I think the last chapter will help us understand better but yeah it all depends because there's like you know multiple time travel theories of how time travel works and different anime implement different ones and some are you can't change the past no matter what if you change the past it changes the future some are like you you just create a new world line and that old one you came from stays the same mm -hmm. like in dragon ball z so it I all think depends this on... of of um of time travel makes sense for this yeah so far i have no complaints and we'll see how they uh again i don't expect the last chapter to explain everything but i do expect to get crucial information that'll help the puzzles fall into place so uh, i look forward to that and then i'd comment on whether it makes sense or not but so far, I definitely am in the camp that it works for this story. Yeah, just makes things a lot more interesting. Um, yeah, we get we talked about those different flashbacks as well. And something that happens, I think, right after that whole flashback with um, Grisha, because I think what happens is Aaron ends up uh, breaking the chain he's in and running towards ymir and then it's this pause in the next episode and we get that whole flashback with um the original uh emir and how she ended up becoming a titan she was um how she was basically fed to that royal family we get fed that to the royal family yeah after backstory. she died after right? she died after they, she died yeah. she, she was would revive, her kid. that's the first time we see that the nape is the weak spot right yeah yes and that, um, Wraith, let us know how you felt about that whole backstory because there was a lot there. She was pretty much just a poor girl, like a peasant. That became and a then slave. And... She let a pig go free, right? Yeah. And then Simil she got yeah. blamed for it and she got chased down and then went into that tree, which this is the most interesting part. And then she fell 
into the tree underwater, and that's where this spine-like creature attacked her spine, leading to the first ever Titan. Yeah, when you think of the like the Ymir first Titan, I was thinking like it was gonna be like a god or like so I don't yeah, know what, get, why I didn't expect it to be like a slave story. that just kind of got lucky. Yeah, we got multiple stories. Ones that she's a goddess. Ones that she. Uh, was devil. she was she came into contact with the devil. Yeah. Another was that she came into contact with uh the source of all organic matter, which is potentially the truest because we still don't know much yes. about this creature. Um. So yeah, I think uh, it all goes to show how you could frame history any way you want to serve your purposes based on what you need from it, right? Mm -hmm. And the Eldians did that, and the Marleans did that too. Yeah, and I'm trying to think, is this whole, I think this is uh, chapter 122, is this whole narrative flashback with Amir, is this for the reader? Or is this is this recanted by someone else? Well, what's, the, I know, chapter, like, what's the chapter called? Sorry? Read the chapter title for that. Do you know it? Do you have it in front of you? I, I think it was something now. along the lines of, so the first chapter is called To You 2000 Years From Now. And I think that backstory is, to like something along the lines of uh the opposite of that wow that like, pig changed the whole world yeah exactly <laughs> single pig man yes 2000 i don't know what it is ago. yes exactly so from you 2000 years ago so it seems like the first chapter was emir communicating with aaron and then this chapter is him communicating back to her so and and you have that attack titan trans time transcendence going on and yeah i do feel like aaron is now aware of this yeah I think he's oh aware yeah this. because it's he not ends just up for the viewer him. i think he's experiencing it in this world as well like he this is through it. him yeah. yeah um continue guys i do need to use the bathroom super quick yeah yeah no worries yeah so um where were we so um, we're at the backstory point yeah so yeah we she ends up getting shot by that spear um and then we find out that the and this would be king is this fritz yeah so this is king fritz yeah. yeah yeah so he makes his children who what's interesting is their names are the names of the walls which i don't know if we got that uh information before yeah so that explains it and we did have like similar i feel like suggestions but here everything is laid out really clearly yeah. and stuff that we didn't know before obviously but i do want to before we just move past it yeah like what did you think about that reveal that it was that spine like creature what did you think of the creature what did you think about that as the explanation for titan powers like how did you feel about all that yeah i mean when she falls we don't really get much of much context about the creature itself right she ends up falling on one of the the spine spikes and then the um she ends up bursting up from that tree but um i don't know i was just, i was just expecting that whole narration about the uh like the devil make what was it making the pact of the devil yeah so you know how adam and eve kind of exactly yeah so that kind of, of myth first, yeah. because i'm still curious as well in terms of the supernatural aspect of this show and like they talked the one time one of we the all are bro we all yeah are. one of the characters um i forget who mentioned it i think it was one of the um like the jaegerist was talking about how maybe there is a god out there and stuff like that which again we're not we haven't been revealed anything about like deities is there a deity in this world i think you're talking about Anyak onyan kopon when he was like yes well yes. i think that you know he created us all in different images so that yes. it would be more fun and stuff like that like i'm curious about that as well what is there like a supernatural dimension to this world well so, clearly there is a supernatural it's there just is depending on depending on what the rules of that supernatural world are yeah and i mean that's a mystery right up to the final chapter so uh that's a good question and i'm wondering too what what the fuck's gonna happen in the final chapter i'm back and i want to yeah, what up, Briggs? And I want to learn what's going to, like, what is the true significance of this spine-like creature? Like, that's that's an ongoing yeah. question, too. Yeah. No, it's it's only a quick glimpse there. And we're, again, we're not given a whole lot of context because we learned that he ends up using it to fight off, like, others, right? Their enemies. 
But then when um, she ends up getting hit by that spear, then it just moves to her getting um, sliced up and eaten to his children. So, yeah, it's not a we just get that glimpse right there. But, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the supernatural, like what to what degree um, do we see any sort of deity if there is one? Um, I'm just curious about this stuff because, yeah, at first you get that kind of quote unquote Titan creation story with um, Ymir and the devil. And I just want to know more about what happened there. Yeah, I feel like the Titan creation story is all bullshit, bullshit at this point. Yeah. With this flashback. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think it's going to end up being a God related thing. This um, supernatural, whatever I, she came in contact with. But I guess we'll see in the final chapter, right? Yeah. Attack on Titan has always been more of a technologically mm -hmm. science focused mm -hmm. series exactly. rather than magic. Right. So, yeah, we'll definitely that would be more in alignment with how it's been so far. But yeah, we'll we'll see. I do think it's funny how people in the comments are like keep commenting on those pigs were valuable. She shouldn't have let it go. And <laughs> you know how much a pig probably cost back then? <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, obviously they're jokes, but it's funny how people are like defending the king who like punished her for stealing his pigs. Yeah. It was pretty hilarious. Um I do want to say King Fritz, like what what like he was such a piece of shit, eh, right? Yes, like no, absolutely. How this whole mighty Eldian Empire started out with this horrible excuse for a human being. Yeah, yeah he says some. He says something like, "I will give you the royal seed" or something. Oh like this, my god, his, his arrogance is off the. <laughs> yeah, charts. the way he talks is like crazy. And God, you know what pissed me off the fucking most? The fucking most was when she took that spear from him, and instead of being like, "Thank you," he's like, "What are you doing? We all know you can get up. Get the fuck off the ground." It's like. Oh my god, yeah. like how cr cruel her life must have been. Ah, uh, like he, that guy irritated me almost like no other. Like Commander Gross or like the the Marleyan Gross was obviously probably the most hateable, but this guy's is up there. This guy is among the most yeah. hateable characters. And it, this is the most spotlight he's had to this point, right? In terms of flashbacks? Yes. I, this is the only flashback. This is of the this only guy, thing yeah. we have. So yeah, it's interesting to see that, like the Eldians, this guy was you know their original king, and he was just a piece of shit. <laughs> and exactly. they're so you know they're so uh, concerned about you know preserving that island, and their founder, their quote unquote founder, is just a piece of shit himself. So and it goes to show how stupid it is to feel pride for like the great Eldian Empire. Yes. When it's based off of this dude who just took advantage of a poor girl that that pretty much was willing to sacrifice her life for him and he treated her like shit. So mm -hmm. again, it's really good for showing how historic events can end up being morphed and manipulated to to pretty much create narratives that serve current ends that have nothing to do with the truth, mm -hmm. which happens yeah, of, in, in the real world all the time. Oh yeah. Think about so many like different Kings from history and just how probably ruthless they were. And they were built up to be someone that they weren't. Yeah. Like the divine right of Kings, right? Like yeah. they were, they were chosen by God and yet they were acting like pieces of shit. So it's, so then how does Aaron end up con convincing Ymir to give her his str her so strength? So this is, this is how it does, because I believe this is a theory, and I think it makes sense if we work off of the titles, that Emir was actually con like contacting with Aaron, maybe subconsciously, from the first chapter, which is why it was to you 2,000 years from now, right? That's the difference pretty much between Aaron and Emir's timelines. Okay. And so she was trying to get him with that probably that dream he saw, set the stage rolling for him to eventually get there and free her by telling her listen you don't need to be a slave anymore you can you could be free you could uh decide what to do next i could end this world and free you from this eternity of servitude which is pretty much what she's experiencing and keep in mind she's she didn't experience this for 2000 years she ex it feels way longer here so yeah. she pretty much has been here for like eternity alone, just following orders. And then Aaron finally helps her snap out of it. Hmm. And so I think there's she definitely... had the power the whole time. It's just she didn't. She had mental change. She had psychological chains based on her upbringing 
that she she was a slave but in mm -hmm. reality she had all the power and she never had to obey the royal family yeah no i think that makes sense because i think there's the, a lot of truth to that i guess we don't know for certain but uh yeah yeah again i think uh i think everything i'll have more to say about everything once we get chapter. the final yeah. chapter yeah because we just get aaron going to Amir and saying she no longer has to follow royal blood and you're, Zeke's freaking out. Yeah, and then it just no, goes you're right no slave, to... You're no god, you're just a person. Yeah. And, and what does Aaron always value above all else? Freedom. freedom. And you, don't so, need to, you don't need to serve anyone. You could be the one, like whatever you choose to be type of thing. Yes. And, like he and asked guys, for the strength so that he could change the world, you know? And you guys know how the attack Titan is has been was part of Amir, right? So that's part of her personality mm -hmm. and that personality is seeking freedom. Yes. And so in a sense, it's like her seeking freedom for herself. Right. So exactly. I'm not yeah. exactly sure if Ymir sent this to the beginning of Aaron to convince him to do these things, but this hundred percent, I think they're able to resonate with each other. And that's how Aaron was able to snap her out of this for sure, because she was a slave. Right. And yeah. it would make sense for Aaron to have her will because she was the attack Titan. Right. Yeah. This like because all of these are parts of herself yes right? all exactly. of these fragments are parts of herself and part of herself wants to obey right authority part of herself wants to be free like all human beings were you know they're multiple sides of us mm -hmm. and they're all warring between each other mm -hmm. yeah the quote-unquote like metaphoric wall that's been blinding her just like how he ends up destroying those walls soon after when he gets possession of it those those walls that have been blinding her are destroyed. And now he's able to like set her free. He, he convinces her the value of freedom there. Yeah. And yeah. How crazy is that when he just says like, you know, you are free. I could end this world right now. Like ending the world. Like mm -hmm. how crazy of a, like it, it's so insane that we started in this little wall in this little city. And now this character that we follow this whole time is about to destroy the yeah. entire world. Yeah. No, oh, I know. There's God, there's so much change from those first couple of What did seasons. you think of that speech that Aaron gave to everybody? Because I thought it was pretty, pretty epic when he's like, everyone outside the walls uh want desires for us to be dead, and I reject that desire, and I'm going to, you know, and end them, them before they can end us. So what did you think about that speech that he gave to the other Eldians? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty intense. And if you think about it, at this point, we don't really have, excuse me, we don't really have that strong leader anymore. Like that, We've had it with Erwin, we had it with Levi. And throughout these chapters, we didn't have that strong voice with those great kind of monologues no, to other don't. characters. And Levi is not really even a leader, honestly. Levi yeah. is... Levi always, like, when it comes down to it, he's like, you got to decide for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But Erwin always had a plan. Um, Hanji is struggling with being a leader, right? So Same yeah. with Armin, trying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Armin even more so than, than Hanji. Yeah, he says at one point he probably wasn't the right person to be chosen. Yeah, when he freaks out on Mikasa. Yeah. He's like, a good leader wouldn't have freaked out like that, but yeah. it's all getting to be too much for him. Yeah, it's like the first real kind of vote of confidence or strong monologue for yeah, the other it's characters. It's not like everyone immediately sides with him, right? <laughs> Absolutely not, no, because but they know is. the uh, they know the uh, repercussions of that. They're not But I think that. everyone's like, this makes more sense. And there is a question about what to do. Like, Jean yes. is a great character for for considering both sides because he's like well these guys did kind of bring this upon themselves and you know i could finally live the life i wanted to do and he's struggling so bad and in the end he decides to help the others to try to save the world that wants to kill them but it's hard it's a hard decision it doesn't come easy yeah no it's uh things get crazy at this point in the in the uh in the manga and right when things get crazy we get a flashback yeah which one was that with mikasa and aaron aaron asking like what, what oh, are you to yes. be and they're just kind oh of like, yeah that's a big that's a big moment too. yeah it is yeah we didn't even we didn't even really talk about mikasa in terms of um i know she doesn't really shine that much in these chapters like she's kind of put in the back burner a bit but there is that one moment she 
keeps the scarf like she leaves it back for the first time yeah because she's still um you could tell she's still kind of psychologically hurt from mm. that whole situation with Aaron. Um, but yeah, we get that flashback and they get like pretty close there as well. No. And I want to know like your thoughts on this whole thing, right? Cause so Aaron at first, remember he viewed everyone on the other side of the sea as an enemy, mm-hmm. but then they went to the other side and he saw human beings, human beings being discriminated against. Right. It wasn't like everybody was this, great uh human being who had this great role in society no there were the haves and the have-nots right have-nots obviously aren't in charge of the military and stuff like that they went to see whether these guys were supposed to be for eldians like to see their meeting and perhaps tell them that they want peace as the island eldians and the whole speech was them saying talking shit about the island eldians and how they're the bad guys they're pure evil while the Eldians here are just like, you know, victims of the guys on the island. And that's when Aaron and everyone else saw, yeah, this will never work. This friendly relationship kind of idea, it's we don't have enough time for it. No. And Aaron decided to do what he did, right? But no one had a better plan. No one had a plan that would that they'd even like consider that would work. So Aaron just didn't want to wait anymore, and he went along with the plan and attacked Marley and put this whole plan into action. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. He's put in a difficult situation, and I wouldn't wait... Sorry, I wouldn't want to be put in that situation because no matter what, you know, it seems like you can't come up with a perfect plan. Like, you have to... Like, people are going to get hurt no matter what. It's a matter of who at this point. Mm -hmm. So... The yeah. cardboard boy in the comments put a good thing about the scarf thing. I always thought the scarf symbolizes her chain as a slave to Aaron. So that's the question. Is it or is it just a sign of her affection um, for Aaron? Yeah, I don't think it's that because she wants it back after, if you remember. Yeah. And well, she ends maybe up with a temporarily it. rejecting Aaron and like her like being kind of forced to protect her. Yeah, so it's like, exactly. It's like, I don't need to, but now I'm going to go back and choose to. That's exactly. kind of how I, I view it. I agree. Yeah. And um, that whole speech that Aaron gave, gave, cause he used the rumble at this point, all the Titans or those like founding Titans are all over the place. And he, that speech he gave was actually heard by Eldians within Marley. Or, yeah. yeah. And it's crazy. kind of sucks for them. Yeah. It's like, oh fuck. What they do we can't do? do anything. Right. <laughs> They're like, okay, well, we're part of the outside, so we're fucked. And that's interesting because all over the internment zones, these guys were like, please, like, Aaron's coming. And then the, everyone's like, yeah, right, guys. Like, we don't <laughs> believe that. We're not letting you out. Yeah. And that's what makes everything complicated because obviously we we end up getting, I know we haven't mentioned her yet, but Annie ends up escaping from that crystal mm-hmm. because he ends up um, he like, removed everyone's getting rid of the powers. hardening. Yeah, so she is concerned because we find out that she wants to go back and have that relationship with her father because they left on good terms, even though he treated her like shit throughout her entire life. And there are people who are like, yeah, I have ties to people in Marley who are Eldians. And if he goes about um, conducting this plan, like my family will be destroyed. So um, obviously the reason there's that alliance there is because we have those characters who are still so tied to the Island and they think like the plan just, it can't be as as simple as he makes it out to be in terms of just destroying everyone outside of the Island. But um, yeah. Yeah. He just doesn't see another fucking way. Like it's just destroy everyone outside of parodies. And I mean, and the whole question is it's super simplistic, right? But it's like, if he doesn't, Will they ever really uh, stop discriminating against Eldians, knowing that they're capable of such a thing? And well, with he... the whole his power right now, he rather than wiping everyone else out, he could use it to protect them and create like fifty years of peace. Yeah, or something but like he that. only has he only has a little bit, and but he's gonna die, right? He's gonna die, and he, you have to pass it down, and there's no and sure he needs way. to trust exactly. He needs to trust that people after him will carry it out, which is a big if. And even still, right. eventually technology will get to the point where they where they can attack and they, they will unless, always be seen as a threat. Exactly. Unless, unless they, you, they don't exist anymore. Wipe out technology to a point where like 
it needs to reset, mm-hmm. like, and you have more time, you can't just like protect your own island and expect technology to, to not advance, uh, just grow. Exactly, they could drop a nuke soon, and like kill yeah, everybody. Exactly. Right? So, so yeah, they're they're estimating the about fifty years left where the titans actually matter and have like power, and there's resources on paradise, so they're always going to be threatened. Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of the fact that we don't know what's right. Like, I yes. have no idea who to side with here yes. because there's no clear answer. And even, like, as Mikasa and Armin are kind of teaming up with the Marleans, they don't really know what they want as want as an outcome. All they know is they want to talk to Aaron and try to talk him out of it, but they don't have a solution. Mm-hmm. No. And they then, don't have a so plan. Then in the final chapters, we see that Levi's still alive. Hanj is there, right? Hanj is there, yeah. What else yeah. ends up happening here? I actually, like, I don't know if this chapter But I wanted, been... I wanted okay, to just, sorry, uh, Ray, so when Aaron, this is a big moment, Aaron asks Mikasa, what am I to you? You remember that conversation? Yeah, or am I fr- a family or something else? Yeah, am I am I your uh, the person who saved you as a kid? Am I family? Like, what is it? And Mika says like blushing, and she says family. What do you think that was about? What did Aaron want to hear? Because he did seem upset by the answer. Yeah, I mean that's where the whole theory of I don't know is he like does he want a relationship with her? I don't know. Maybe that could be one of the theories, but. Well, um, what's another theory? Like, if, if I think he's that's the not only asking, real option, right? Yeah, if he's not <laughs> asking her right now, like, do you love me? Like, you want to marry me kind of love. Like, if that's not what he's asking now, it's like, why else would he bring this mm-hmm. up? And because yeah. why would pondering, he be upset? like, what if she answered differently? Would exactly Aaron be acting the way, way he's acting? Would that lead to the end of the world if she answered differently? So it's, I, I think it's interesting. It leads us to the question whether love, whether these, like, relationships could lead us to take different paths um and yeah it's a question if if mikasa said yes what would have happened well, well if like she's like i love you as a husband as a boyfriend like at the end of the day aaron's still about freedom and protecting the people he cares about whether it's family or the answer was different it's definitely something to think about but at the same time it's like if they still were if they were in love and they ended up having a relationship would that stop aaron from doing anything i don't know if his philosophy yeah. would change if anything he would still probably do it it's, yeah, but the it, whole thing about Tagatai is people constantly change, right? True. So, like, with uh, Annie's dad is a great point. Um, he started out like, oh, I'm going to raise this child so I can get perks and benefits. And then later, he's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about these. I just want you to come back alive. Jean wanted the, to get perks and benefits. And then he keeps sacrificing those to fight the underdog fight and, almost like, pretty much sacrifices all those things. So, who knows? I mean... Depending on what happens, Aaron could take a different path here and there. Who knows? That's why I think Mikasa could possibly really shine in these last few chapters. Because, I mean, I'm pretty sure if you look at the way he treated her, um, you know, this was the last episode we did this when he ends up calling her off. He knows the effect Mikasa could have on him. Uh, There were so many times in the past where, you know, she was there and she would... If when he was acting irrational, she would help to just like, you know, clear his mind and just get him on the right track. And I think he fears that she will basically convince him not to go through with this plan. And that's why he's pushed her away. So I feel that she has the potential to shine if she's able to talk with him. Um, so I don't know. I think there's there's a significance there. Like that relationship will either go really well at the end or maybe, like you said, maybe he'll just he won't care. And he'll just push her away and, you know, he's going through with the plan and that's what he's doing. And I think Briggs Briggs is right when he says, like, clearly Aaron has a philosophy and I think he's being true to his truest self here. But it's always interesting, like, clearly Mikasa is asking the what if question. Yes, yes. Like, what might have happened? Man, I can't stop thinking. I got spoiled for something in Attack on Titan later on. Um, that I haven't read yet, and I just can't stop thinking about it whenever we have conversations <laughs> like this. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, br- anything else, Ray, that that you wanted to discuss? What about the whole Jean Marley and meetup? Anything before that? Yeah. Is by the way, I know we have that like dream of his at the beginning of the 
chapter. Is that Migasa in the dream? At the beginning of the first chapter? Of uh, 127. I don't know. I can't recall what happens there. Okay. Doesn't he dream of like an ideal future or something? And we see this woman in it and it looks like Mikasa. I don't know. I don't recall. Uh, right. I'm looking at it right now in the beginning here. I'm not sure what I'm looking at actually. Attack on Titan chapter 127. And yeah, I must have just skipped that. I'm opening it up right now. Let's see. I just, it's hard it's for me to a... tell who these people are. Yeah. That's what, that's, I, when I kind of glossed over it, and it's just like... No, this is this is Jean. This looks like Jean, right? Yeah, yeah, this is Jean imagining like, oh, it would be so nice if I chose the smart path. And then that kind of... The oh, and then path. Hanji woke him up. Okay, this makes sense. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. that was just a Jean like, kind of having a dream, kind of wishing... He could stop being the good guy and do the good thing and just fucking take the easy path. Yeah. But again, it's against like he can't do it. It's against yeah. his character. Yeah. I did actually enjoy. I know 127 was a fairly slow episode compared to like all the action that happened beforehand. But I do like the emphasis on with talking and open dialogue and understanding the other like progress can be made in small steps. I agree because it is like a very optimistic episode to be left off with. You get, uh, even though there's fighting, I think at one point, um, John ends yeah. up like punching Ryan. It's necessary, right? Yeah, the yeah. fighting is but, necessary to get it all out there. Yeah, but like there is an attempt to finally, if not like bridge the gap, to at least tell one story and for the other to be willing to listen to it, which is big progress compared to what we've seen before, where it's just, oh, you're the other, we'll kill you, right? So that's really cool to see. And we also, um, speaking of the same topic, um, that moment with um, Kaya is um, really, I think, profound with Gabby, how um, she ends up saving her. And then in the in the meantime, um, when that one, um, I'm trying to think that when Eldian ends up looking down, Kaya ends up returning the favor to um gabby and then gabby reveals her name and it's just kind of this idea that yeah you could like be friends with the other you know ideology has made it so we can't you know connect and we have to look at each other as enemies but if we look beyond the ideology we're human we're trying to you know um do what's best for humanity whatever we think that is exactly. so i do like that breakdown even in the slightest way of ideology and there showing is hope. that there is hope. Yeah, it ends on a hopeful note. I really like that. There is hope for the next generation. But yeah, we'll see what happens with this one because it does not look good right now. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm How so about, excited for the remaining chapters. We didn't address this. Sorry. One other weird thing was um, Connie wanting to feed Falco to his mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Annie. Annie came out too. That's another thing. Yeah. Like, how about when he's like, yeah, just take this brush and brush your teeth. Could you do that for me? That was like, so how weird. ridiculous is that? That was such like a surreal moment. Yeah. It's oh like, hey, uh, so get up here and uh, get start closer, brushing the uh, teeth. Her mouth. Uh, <laughs> Nothing suspicious here. I mean, a little bit. Like, you know, dental hygiene is important for Titans like, too. <laughs> it's like, weren't we going to the hospital? It's like, yeah, but before we go to the hospital, can we just brush this Titan's teeth, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Did you enjoy seeing Annie come out? Yeah, I mean, it was interesting too when they're sitting around and they just notice her and she's just like, you know, almost looking like Sasha in that moment, just eating because she's starving. So yeah. that was interesting. It's also interesting to know that she was able to hear everything for those four years. Oh, yeah, which means everything Armin said. Yes. She caught absolutely. on. Man, I'm voting for these guys so much. Like, Armin and I, I ship them, yeah. Like we'll see what happens, but yeah, I ship them so hard. Yeah, no, there's just there's so much in these chapters that there are things we'd even get to, but like, it's just such. I was so glad that um, I don't want to say I predicted the story would end up like this, but it's just so not a one dimensional story. There's so much to it, so many layers, and you know, I just. 
I don't know. It's such a great story. Yeah, and work, and you just went from being a virgin to in like a month or so, maybe between a month and two months. Uh, you're gonna catch up by next week. A little more than series. ten chapters. Away. You're gonna be you're gonna be one of the first people to finish the series. Think about that. It's crazy. I appreciate but, yeah. you guys asking me to be honest. No, for it's, sure, man. Such a I, great this experience. is one of my favorite series already, and I'm sure it'll like the ending. I, I don't think it'll disappoint, honestly. I mean, the fact that it could be good right up to the last chapter in and of itself is good because some some things start falling off a bit as it's wrapping yes. up. If anything, this but, is one of the series that started off okay and just kept on getting better. Yeah, in my opinion, that is the case. Uh, anything else, Ray, just before we uh, wrap up? Um, no, I mean, I, I don't think so. I'm just... There really was so much that happened. We can't cover every specific detail. No. We covered all the big stuff. I th I'd We're say. already an hour over. Yeah. I think so, yeah. And we could still continue, but no, I know what you mean. It's just, there's so much here. Yeah, cool. All right, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Remember, you could check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Leave five-star reviews. We really appreciate it if you enjoy what we do. Uh, for next time, be sure to read chapters 128 to 139, where we are going to finish off this epic, epic story. Woohoo! And until next time, see us, Space Cowboys. Bang!